Good morning. It is Jane with Scraptastic Yarns. We all survived the weekend, right? Can you see what's going on with this hair? Crazy hair, I'm telling you. Sometimes you just have to give up. Um, as you know, last week, <coughs> sorry, I was in North Carolina burying Thomas. And that trip was a really good trip, so I enjoyed it. Did some things I wanted to do that I've never been able to do before because the husband just didn't like to stop places I wanted to stop. So guess what? Jane had a little bit of sense of freedom. All right, Nan's next knots. Um, this is where I'm at so far. We're getting there. Three more weeks, I think. Week 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, three more weeks. And then this will be ready to go off to the prayer shawl ministry. Uh, most likely for the gatehouse hospice. Since it is a larger blanket. Which is fine with me. Alright guys. The only other thing I've been working on is this shawl here. This is Crystal Bagaday's killer Carol killer queen shawl that she did recently um, I am enjoying it like I said I have been using the shawl in the ball because there was a partial in the prayer shawl ministry and the color wind chimes and um, because there were some people that just they'd started something of course I couldn't figure out what they were doing so I just ripped it back and started this shawl with what there was. So yeah, that's where I'm at. While I was in North Carolina, um, I met up with someone. And uh, thank you for meeting up with me. We had quite, a, quite an interesting afternoon. And I really appreciate your company because I really needed it at that time. Um, I would have liked to have met up with Marie. But that didn't happen. So um, maybe next time when I go back. Um, because I would, there will be more trips back to North Carolina, even though Thomas has passed away. Um, I do have one son that lives there, as well as Thomas's family, and we're still connected. Plus, Thomas Headstone will be coming sometime soon. So, yeah, I'll be making a trip for that. Even though I, I can see pictures of it all I want, something about touching it. All right, while I was there, stopped at Hobby Lobby. We had a grand time at Hobby Lobby. The yarn wasn't on sale, but that didn't stop us from looking. And uh, the other thing is, I did buy some fabric. Lately, Hobby Lobby has been having 40% off on their fabrics. Um, before it was 30%. Now, the battings and things like that are still just 30%, but the fabric is 40%, so you you can bet I'm going to buy some. But, I have been eyeing this fabric for quite some time. I think it would make some beautiful totes, so, um, or project bags. So, yeah, I got a little of it, got a little of the pansies. I absolutely love these. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And then, got a little bit of some more bees in the hives. What is about this fabric with the bees this year? Now, they had two bolts in their markdown pile for like, I want to say it was either two or three dollars a yard. And they call them Christmas blenders. But come on. That goes any time of the year. So does the green. Any time of the year. So yeah, I did stop and get those purchases. And then, I'd stopped over at the Michaels there. Um, at Alamance Crossing. And got a couple of things. Um, they were out of bags. They hadn't come in on the truck yet. So she threw it into a trash bag. You know, whatever. But, uh, 
What I got were two of the Ogo Karens, the big donuts, and these are 9.9 .9 ounces, 502 yards. It's number four, and this is in the color Frostberry. So I picked up two of those. Um, they had a markdown for three dollars each, so I did pick up two of those. And I haven't decided if I'm going to work with those or if I'll take those up to prayer show. So, you know, you never know. And then, um, every time I have been in my Michaels, they have a beautiful purple dragon. Which is a nice little dragon. But, this one had this cute little stuffy in that blue colorway and I fell in love with her I don't think she has a name you know sometimes they name the Beanie Baby sometimes they don't let's look and see Sapphire this is Beanie Boo's collection her birthday was Febu February the 23rd Aw, Sapphire but, um, yeah. So that is it for what I've been up to other than um, walking. Um, as you know, I have an issue with bursitis, which is plaguing that right hip really bad. The left hip, I've been able to stretch a lot of that out, so I don't have issues with it. But this right hip is just being a pain in the patootie. So, literally. And um, so I've been doing a lot of stretching with it. It's almost there, folks. But one of the suggestions was to walk with a cane. So I've been walking with Thomas's cane. And it does help. Um, the idea is that if it's your right side that's affected, you use the cane in the left side. That keeps you from doing your hip waddle. I don't understand the mechanics of it, but it is helping. And I am able to get a few more steps by doing that. So that is basically it for now. Um, I have been still going through a lot of things in the house, reorganizing things getting rid of a ton of stuff that we have had since probably 1995 <laughs> that we don't use. And I don't know why we kept it other than, you know, Thomas was a bit of a hoarder when it came to certain things because you might need it later. Well, we haven't used it in, what, 30 years? So 20 something, 27 years, so let's get rid of it. So I've been doing a lot of that. And um, it's, it's just been rather interesting going through all the stuff and looking and seeing why did I think I needed to have this? Who knows? And sometimes I think it's whatever we're going through at the time. You know, um,. They say for a lot of people that hoard things, that there are mental health issues. Probably. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I used to joke about, because when my kids were little and their friends would come over, they would always say, oh, there's always food in the house. Well, there was a time when there was no food in the house, and um, I had to make a five-pound bag of potatoes last for two weeks for two of us so um I feel more secure having food around me does that make sense and I know what that comes from that comes from that feeling of insecurity during that period of time but I don't have any insecurities now that I know of but so why do I feel like I need to hoard all this yarn and fabric. I mean, seriously. So anyway, I've been working on that. I have been working on a couple of quilts. Um, 
I know I told you that my cousin had sent me all of the my Nana's quilt tops, so I've been working on um, just putting them together, getting them ready to quilt. So um, I'm hoping to start quilting on those fairly soon. Of course, with the weather as hot it is, as it is, I have not put the air conditioning into this room. So, um, yeah. Um, so a lot of that is dependent on if it's cool enough to work in here. Do have a couple of fans in here. But, you know, sometimes it's just too hot even with the fans. So I'm thinking I'm probably going to have to put the window, the, the uh, window AC in. So... It'll be what it's going to be. I mean, we just, we haven't even got to June yet. And it's already like 91 degrees today it's supposed to be. Which in Pennsylvania is pretty hot. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to go out early, get my walk in early before it gets those temperatures. Then hopefully I'll do another second walk later in the evening. Probably a little shorter walk. Since it'll be pretty warm. Um, that is it. I have also been working on some ideas for a craft fair that I have been thinking about doing, but I'm not real sure I want to. You know, it's one of those things. It goes back and forth because I really detest sitting, standing, waiting, showing people things and then walk off. That kind of annoys me, you know. But whatever. So maybe I will, maybe I won't. So I've been working on some ideas for that. Um, I have also started to work on the other channel, the So Scraptastic channel. But it's slow going because in between going through everything and all the stuff that needs to be done, which normally we would divide between the two of us, so now I have to do it all. So, um, yeah, it's going slow, folks, but it'll get there. So, that is where we're at today. Other than that, it's been a glorious day. Last night when I was out walking, I went walking about 8 o'clock at night, and the sun was setting, and it was amazing. So, I've thought about taking you on my walks with me, but I'm not so sure you'd like that. We'll see. All right. Are you ready for a little what in tarnation now that I've just kind of blabbered on about nothing? <laughs> I know I am. Now, I hope that you will take the time to go look at the video for this first story. Because, I'm sorry. I'm sure these folks had a blast. And I would have loved to have been a part of it. National Senior Games breaks world record with Game of Freeze Dance. Attendees at the 2022 National Senior Games in Florida broke a Guinness World Record when 1,308 people participated in the world's largest game of free dance, freeze dance. The event at Las Olas Intercoastal Promenade Park in Park Park in Fort Lauderdale was witnessed by Guinness World Records adjudicator and was confirmed as the world's largest game of free dance. A game that calls on players to abruptly freeze in place when the music stops and remains still until the music resumes. <laughs> you know, kind of like musical chairs. The record attempt was planned by the National Senior Games Association and Pansera Biosciences. Organizers said the game Freeze Dance was chosen to promote lovers, to promote Iovera, a cold therapy device designed to reduce pain in knee osteoarthritis patients. Sorry about that. The winner of the freeze dance game was Jesse Lee Falling of Broken Air, Oklahoma, who was attending the games to support his mother, a competitor in track and field events. See, there's no reason as you get older you can't do things like this. So, let's get out 
enjoy. Now, so go watch the video. It's really cute. This next one almost caused me nightmares. Um, I grew up in New Mexico and there were a lot of tarantulas around where I lived and um, tarantulas can jump pretty high and when it rained they would come out of they dig holes tunnels down into a burrow into the ground and when it rained they would come up you never knew if they would jump or not this is along those lines only it's not a spider Jumping worms, the evil twin of earthworms, showing up in California. So, California, I hope you keep your jumping worms. <laughs> Gardeners, beware. The invasive Amethus agretis, gretis, gretis, Oh, that's a hard name to pronounce. Also known as the Asian jumping worm, could be wiggling around the garden near you. Not me. These worms are known for their insatiable appetite and ability to jump a foot, a foot, in the air. Yes, you read that right, a foot. True to their name, they jump and thrush immediately when handled, behaving more like a threatened snake than a worm, sometimes even breaking and shedding their tail when caught, said the California Department of Food and Agriculture in a report adding that they have been known to jump off the ground or out of bait cans. I'm not fishing with those guys either. As if that's not discur disconcerting enough, the worms are extremely, extremely active, aggressive, and have voracious appetites, the CDFA warned in the report. According to recent news coverage, Asian jumping worms have been spotted in California with a greater frequency of late. Native to East Asia, particularly Japan and the Korean Peninsula, these worms began arriving in the United States in the early 1900s, tucked away in the soil of potted plants, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Since then, the worms have wiggled, wiggled their way across the U.S. and can now be found in at least 34 states. Please, Lord, don't let it be Pennsylvania. Ooh, help, hashtag NYI map invasives. Find invasive species like hashtag jumping worm in the video in their annual mapping challenge now through July 31st. Find invasives, report them to IMAP and watch yourself rise on the leaderboard. Maybe earn some fame. No, don't want to. Not gonna. This, this video here and the newscasters that told the story, you can see the heartwarm, heartwarming event that it caused in these newscasters to see the video and to report on this story. It's very positive. Squirrel freed of zip tie belt in Michigan. A Michigan woman was able to rescue a squirrel with a zip tie around its body with the help of social media and a local animal rescuer. Joanne Mason said she initially noticed something was unusual about the squirrel when she saw it outside the back door of her Allegan home. I look out my window and there's this squirrel and it has something white around it, she told WWMT-TV. I look closer and it's a zip tie. Mason posted about the squirrel in the Allegan County Informed Group on Facebook where users nicknamed the animal Mr. Zippy. The group connected Mason with Mary Humphrey, a woman who helps capture lost animals as a hobby. Humphrey set up a trap in Mason's yard that was successful in snaring Mr. Zippy after a few days. You know, the amazing thing was this was all caught on camera while the reporter was there. So, I mean, it's amazing. 
Mason said she was watching through a window when the squirrel approached the trap. I was trying to stay calm, and I kept saying, Come on, come on, come on. And then he came closer, and the trap went off, and I was just so happy, Mason said. Humphrey donned thick gloves and was able to grab hold of the squirrel and cut the zip tie from around its body. Mr. Zippy was immediately released back into the yard. Mr. Zippy has been set free of his white zip tie belt, Mason announced in the Facebook group. So, and I think the reporters in the story said that they went in with the winter coat and winter gloves, you know, to prevent the squirrel from biting them. Because, you know, when squirrels are scared, they do bite. But it's a very heartwarming story, and I hope you will watch the video. Um, Miss Mason, she has quite a few things that I think we need to hear in this day and age. So, that's all I'm saying. Now, wolves have long been a part of my life. Um, I love wolves. I have, in many times, collected figurines of wolves. Um, t-shirts with wolves on them. Those kind of things. Um, wolves are my spirit animal, and for spirit animals, it also means it's a bit of an educator, a bit of a wild uh, card, so, yeah. So, I'm real thrilled to hear, to read this story. Rhode Island Zoo welcomes birth of the world's most endangered wolf. A Rhode Island Zoo announced the birth of a critically endangered red wolf pup the first born at the facility since 2005. The Roger Williams Park Zoo in Providence announced the pup was born May the 5th to first-time mother Brave, 6, and father Diego, 7. The zoo said the pup is the first red wolf born at the zoo since 2005. The zoo keepers and veterinary team continue to monitor mom and baby through the use of an infrared camera located inside the wolf's newly built birthing den, the zoo said in the birth announcement. While the pup has been observed nursing and appears to steadily gain weight, the next month is a critical time for the pup's development. Red wolves are considered to be the world's most endangered canid species, with 15 to 20 remaining in the wild. <sighs> now this next story. I mean, I can understand prote protesting climate change, climate issues, but seriously, the way this person chose to do it was just wrong. You know, find a better way. Um to do this than to try to destroy artwork. Just saying. Man disguised as old woman smears cake across the front of the Mona Lisa. A man disguised as an elderly woman in a wheelchair smeared cake across a piece of glass that protects the Mona Lisa at Paris fam Paris's famous Louvre Museum and was sent for a psychiatric evaluation, authority said. Good. I hope they keep him on a 72-hour hold. The incident happened on Sunday when the man, who wore a black wig and lipstick, abruptly smeared the glass with a piece of cake. One witness said in a tweet that the man jumped out of the wheelchair and attempted to smash the bulletproof glass of Mona Lisa before he smeared the cake on it. Another said he also threw roses before he was tackled by security. Some said the stunt appeared to be a climate change protest, and the 36-year-old man shouted in French to think about the earth. Seriously? France? French? When you're burning things left and right in protest? Really? The man was arrested and sent for psychiatric evaluation. Painted by Leonardo da Vinci, the Mona Lisa is believed to have been created between 1503 and 1506 and is considered by many to be the world's most famous and most visited work of art. I would love to go see that. It's amazing. 
Bulletproof glass was placed over the painting after two attacks in 1956 when it was splashed with acid and chipped with a rock. Could you not find a better target than the piece of art? I mean, really. Think about it. You want us to think about the earth, but then you're destroying, you're trying to destroy something. So, I don't know. Whatever, right? All right, guys. I hope that you will get out sometime, even if it's just to sit out on a porch for a little bit and see the beautiful sunrises, sunsets that God has provided for us, as well as marvel at all the unique things Things in the United States in the world from this great big creation this big blue marble we live on and just know that there was a creator that created it and as always be kind be kind to one another love one another all that good stuff and I will see you again soon and that's it for now so everybody have a great week. I will see you again soon. And, uh, yeah. Bye.